It was a moonless night on May 10th, 1918. Lieutenant Elijah Tanzi and his regiment had been assigned to Outpost 20 just outside of the Argonne Forest. Elijah and his fellow officer, 2nd Lieutenant Luke Harper, spoke in hushed voices to pass the quiet evening. The crack of a rifle captured their focus. Before Elijah could process what was happening, fighting broke out in earnest. He knew of trench raids, but in their two months on the front, most of the fighting had been done by snipers and bombardment. Earlier raids had been done in other sections of the trench. It was always in some way distant, removed, impersonal. He knew this day would come, but no rational thought could have prepared him. An explosion a ways down the trench showered Elijah with smoke and shrapnel. It was a ways off, but he still felt the force, and his ears rang. Elijah braced against the trench wall before him. Luke said something, but in the chaos, no words came through. At the first sight of movement in the smoke, somewhere above the trench line, Elijah raised his LaBelle rifle and fired. Some part of Elijah had always hoped he would hesitate before ending his first life. Perhaps offer mercy. Yet as motion promised more opponents, training took over. He cleared the chamber, pushed the bolt handle forward, and readied his next shot. The Harlem Hellfighters, or 369th Infantry, was a regiment of racially segregated American soldiers that fought with notable valor in the First World War. They were formed as a branch of the New York National Guard, then assigned to the 185th Infantry Regiment. Training is challenging. It should be. Soldiers should be prepared for the hardships ahead. Even so, these men faced additional obstacles due to their race both in overt ways, such as enduring segregation and lynch threats in North Carolina, or in more subtle ways, such as having to train with brooms instead of rifles early on because they weren't provided with the same equipment as white regiments. When they finally got to Europe, they were transferred to the French army in large part because white American soldiers did not want to fight alongside them as equals. The French troops had no such apprehensions. They just needed forces, and at this late stage in the conflict, they happily welcomed any help they could get. Elijah, the main character of my upcoming novel, had a different experience than most soldiers in his regiment. He was an officer who trained in desegregated classes. He got the same education and preparation as his white counterparts, although had to endure the same trials once he went with his men to the south to complete their training. Although the novel takes place after the conclusion of the war, I thought it might be interesting to explore some of his formative experiences and the events that shaped who he is at the start of the novel. Elijah was born in 1896 to parents with an adventurous story of their own, the daughter of parents who escaped slavery as children, and the immigrant son of Moroccan laborers met at a college in Boston. They impressed upon Elijah and his two siblings the importance of education and, being from a mixed-faith household, the formation of one's own convictions and beliefs. Elijah's father did not support him going to war. Being from a country harmed in many ways by conflicting European interests, and indeed one of the preluding altercations between Germany and France, Hassan did not want his son losing his life for a white man's war. His mother Ella's parents felt similarly. Ella and his uncle Leon offered the perspective that black Americans should fight, and that this was an obligation, higher calling, an opportunity to prove their worth to a nation that had so long degraded and disrespected them. This reflected the two main sentiments of black Americans on what was then perhaps optimistically called the war to end all wars. Elijah chose to fight. Once they reached Europe, they more than proved themselves. The Harlem Hellfighters famously spent more time in combat than any other American unit, never lost a man to capture or a foot of ground. They were called the Black Rattlers back home, the men of bronze by their French companions, the German troops gave them the title the Harlem Hellfighters. Heroes were made at this time. 
Just four days after my fictional introduction, a real man named Private Henry Johnson of the Harlem Hellfighters single-handedly held back a German trench raid, killing four men and wounding as many as 30 others, driving off a quiet assault with the butt of his rifle, a knife, and his fists before they could ambush his fellow soldiers. He sustained great injury in the encounter and was the first American soldier to receive the French Cross of War. Then Sergeant Johnson returned home after the war and, although participating in the triumphant march upon their return home, was greeted with a generally cold reception. Johnson was given the opportunity to speak in St. Louis and, rather than regale the guests with his personal triumphs or of racial harmony in the trenches, instead took the opportunity to discuss the many abuses that he and his fellow black soldiers endured by their white countrymen. Far from the improvements many black soldiers hoped their valor would inspire, violence against black Americans spiked at this time, culminating in so many attacks that it was later called the Red Summer. Posthumous awards have been since offered, but Johnson died alone and penniless a decade after his return to a country that repaid his heroics with more contempt than respect or gratitude. Like some of his fellow soldiers, Elijah remained in Europe for many months after the armistice working as a guard and prisoner of war camps. He finally decided to return home after he received word from his mother that his father had passed away from the Spanish flu. Although coming home hoping to heal, Elijah's ship was struck down by a storm. He was adrift at sea for countless days, trapped on a lifeboat with nothing but mineral water, crate of onions, his thoughts, and that wretched thing called hope. His prayers were answered when, on the brink of death, he was rescued by a passing ship. When Elijah awakened, he was in a hospital. Although fully healed, nothing was familiar. A stranger explained that good fortune crossed his path with the ship, but he was now in a distant land, and the next ship home would not come for a year. This land is Chimere, a realm populated by other beings and beasts taken from Earth and set free in this new world. Although at first angry and afraid, Elijah quickly realized the potential of a year in a world where no one knows of the Great War or the prejudice he faced on Earth. Chimere was no paradise, and Elijah quickly found himself caught up in their conflict that forces him to face his past, but that is a story for another time. My first draft of Elijah's character was a young man who found an Indrakai egg back when I was 12. Another story I wrote was a historical fanfic of the Moroccan explorer Ibn Battuta coming to Chimere after he explored the Muslim world in the 1300s. As I got older, the two characters and stories merged. After discussions with a professor and family friend who specializes in World War I, I chose to feature the Harlem Hellfighters as my book's protagonist when I wrote the story as my first full novel back in 2012. A few years after that first draft, Brooks and White published The Harlem Hellfighters, a fantastic graphic novel that explores the history of these accomplished and tenacious, but tragically overlooked regiment. Two years after that, the game Battlefield 1 had a storyline that featured the Harlem Hellfighters, which was very exciting to hear. I never played the game, but it looked engaging and a fitting tribute to these brave men. I also enjoyed watching my housemates play the game for the pigeon mechanics. The Swedish heavy metal band Sabaton also has a pretty fantastic tribute to the Harlem Hellfighters, released in their latest album. Over the past year, I have written a completely fresh draft of the novel, utilizing my improved writing technique and experience, and the more finalized development of Chimere. I'm currently waiting to hear back from my first round of readers before I begin searching for a literary agent. There's a lot of life experience that separates me from Elijah. I am a white atheist who has never served in the military, but I hope that I have done justice to his character and that he may become another tribute to the brave men of the 369th Infantry Regiment, the Hellfighters of Harlem.
Thank <laughs> you.